really delighted um, to be able to uh, deliver this tutorial. I, I actually went back to older material, um, which I had used in the past, the basis for the slides that I posted. And um, I was actually shocked, shocked to discover that while it seems so recently that I was standing with them the hall in 386 delivering this tutorial um, to uh, to folks, a number of whom went on to, to do some really great modeling um, using this knowledge, seemed to find it useful. That was five years ago, the last time I gave it, five years. Um, and uh, I was going over it and realized, gosh, you know, um, there's, I'd probably present it a bit differently, but also um, some of the needs in the framework have evolved as well. And so I was actually uh, updating some stuff and um, and reflecting on, you know, um, the needs for covering Java in light of what we've built in this, as well as uh, some of the models we've looked at, uh, which we didn't build, but which are in the example. And um, good news is there's, there's quite a few things that you used to have to deal with more that you don't have to as much, and which are more kind of marginal or side issues now, which used to be more common. And, um, but then there's a lot of basics which are in common and which I'm gonna emphasize. This is a story about, not about Java as a whole, but Java that's really important to cover for using any logic model. And even, even for really um, understanding any logic. Um, so uh, I should note that um, any logic uh, is one of several agent based modeling platforms that use uh, Java. Um, Repast uses Java too. And in fact, if you're engaging with Repast models, so historically very important agent based modeling platform. Um, you need Java knowledge much more so than any logic because it it requires a more a broader repertoire within Java, a broader set of issues, um, and uh, and you're really writing some pretty big code. Um, there are other platforms um, like OpenM or ModGen, which um, which depend on languages very similar in many ways to Java. And many of the things that I'm going to talk about carry over to them as well. Um, so bear in mind that while some of what I'll be talking about is any logic specific, there's a lot that's not. In fact, 90% of what I'm talking about will carry over to, to Java more generally and, um, and uh, actually to um, most of it to C++. That's like probably 80% or so. Um, so, I've been doing Java programming since the mid 90s and C programming since the late 80s. Um, written hundreds of thousands of lines in C and massive amounts in Java and really um, very, very familiar with these languages. And I'm pleased to say that the amount that you really need to know for, for any logic is quite small. Um, and and yet there are these key sub pieces. So I'm gonna try to walk you through a lot of these key sub pieces. And I'm gonna do it in a different order than I did it in 2007. Maybe that will be helpful. Um, so we've been engaging with, with different models. I'm gonna share my screen. Um, we've been engaging with different models in this bootcamp. Um, and uh, just to kind of remind you of some of what we've been um, seeing here, and where is my any logic? There it is. Um, you know, we've had have models where we put in code, right? We we assign colors, right? Um, we we assigned uh, heart disease hazard rates to have interacting state charts. We declared variables. We put in place parameters. We put in place specifications for what's the what's the the hazard rate involving a bunch of different things. I don't know if you remember this, but basically time since quit. We've added functions here. These are all 
at some level, Java things. Um, and uh, if you look, uh, you know, around this model, you'll find various bits of Java code, right? Um, and I want to give you a concrete sense of what's going on. I want to give you a sense with these, with formulas like this. And I want to give you a sense with statements like this. And I want to give you a sense with functions like this, variables and, and these sort of types and that sort of stuff. So it's less mysterious. That's what I'm going to aspire to. Um, and it's probably going to take more than one session, but we'll actually cover a lot of ground today. A lot of ground. That's the plan. Okay. So um, I should note that you know some of the models that I provided you, and some that um, I've shown you, have a lot more need for this yet. So, for example, that agent-based calibration model. If we had scrolled down and I actually talked about it, it has actually a fair bit of little bits of code scrolled away down there. That wandering elephants model is like the heart of dark. It's like a jungle of code in which the and the elephants uh, wander. And uh, as I said, it kind of give me give me the willies um, to to sort of go through that. Um, actually, I'm, I'm exaggerating a bit. It's just not very well done. It's um, it's uh, put together in a way that's not that professional for me. Um, it's kind of um, a, way too informal for, I mean, and, and not that carefully done, not that clearly documented. But if you go in and kind of poke around the rules for elephants, for example, here, you'll find that there's a um, little bit of, of use of declarative mechanisms, meaning where you kind of illustrate the, the dynamics. But then you'll find associated with this um, and uh, you know, associated with this is this whole lot of code. You can see it here, just line after line of code. And, you know, that does crop up in some models. This is done in a very sloppy sort of way, in my view. I mean, when I say sloppy, I don't actually mean that it's incorrect. I just mean it's needlessly um, obscure. And it's, it doesn't convey the intentions well. I'm gonna give you guidance that would help you understand that code, but hopefully by the end of these discussions, I'm gonna give you guidance which would help you avoid writing code and and write code that's a lot cleaner. So this isn't the very worst. It does have comments and so on. Um, it does have the error messages here, but it's it's needlessly crafty. So okay, so let's talk about that. Talk about that. Okay. So the first thing I want to cover is something that we have put in lots and lots of places within our models. To wit, these little formulas, little things to calculate things. We had them here, like to calculate this hazard rate. But in a more basic level, we had them here, like saying, how big should the radius of this thing be? We gave a little formula for, for the radius saying, make it bigger based on how many connections I have. Um, we had color based on the value of a, of a parameter. Um, and many, many places in this model, we had these little kind of references to values. Some of them were just sort of calculations involving a, uh, a formula. Um, others of them involved uh, uh, some some more involved components. And even that SAR agent-based calibration, we also had these kind of things. Like there were little formulas that looked kind of innocuous, but um, well, they were innocuous, but they were they were simple, but I want to have uh, so these things are called the so-called formulas that calculate values. These are called expressions. Okay. Um, and I know that sounds obscure and I sympathize, but um that's how we say a formula that returns a value, okay? So its job in life is to calculate a value. Calculate the value 33.3 .3 because it's 1.0 divided by 0.3. Or it's the value of a, of a variable that's used. Um, we saw that just a moment ago, a value of a variable. And um, 
maybe that value of a variable is um, is referring to like this developing heart disease is referring to the value of this variable, which is a double. So that variable holds a value. So it turns out these things calculate a value. That's their job. They, they calculate up a value. They have values for the peak. They first figure out the values for the pieces and they calculate a value for the whole thing. And, and that gives back a value. So they're called expressions. Um, so what's a value? It's a, it's a single quantity. So it can't be further a value. It's like a number, uh, for example, or a pointer at an object or, or a string that says, um, hello or whatever. Um, and, you know, these are examples of values here. Right? There can be double precision values or so-called floating point values like this. There can be integers. They look like that. Um, uh, there can be characters, there can be booleans, true or false things. Um, and then there are some that are objects. And, and this is really like a reference. It's saying like, it's a, it's like a, something that says that one there, that one there, that one there. It's like pointing at, referring to something. The red marker, it's like I'm referring to this red marker. And we'll, we'll get to that. That's a little bit more advanced concept, but we'll get to it because it's very important because we use these all the time. We say, who is my mother? Or we say, the agent to the left of me or the nearest agent to me or the agent to whom I'm connected or I say send to a random agent, et cetera. This is a reference to a to me, to me as an object. Okay, um, so a Java expression, the job of a Java expression is to compute values, okay? So, so this big expression full of sound and fury, its job is to calculate a value, two, 3.5, whatever it is. Whatever type it is, it's, it's one of those. So maybe it calculates a double value. So it's 2.5 or 3.14 or whatever. Or maybe it calculates an integer, and it's a two or minus 10, or something like that. Um, and you've probably used these before in like Excel. Probably write a little plan. You never thought of it as a big value. It's a big deal. Um, and the truth is it isn't much more of a deal here. It was there. Um, so uh, very similar ideas. Um, uh, so. In most places that any logic wants a value, it wants a number, you can actually put one of these expressions that calculates a number and it will it'll calculate it. Mm -hmm. um, it will determine it while it's running. Um, so um, we commonly create these formulas or so called expressions um, of various sorts. So an expression has pieces of out of which it's made. Like this one has a bunch of pieces. There's a times here. It has a function call here. This calls time since quit. Um, it is getting a, a, a parameter here from main. And so there's lots of pieces of it. It has a three and it's multiplying whatever the values of, of, of these. It calculates the exponential of that. Decreasing curve yesterday, it takes the result of that, multiplies it by three. So it kind of calculates from the bottom line. And when you calculate it, it has these so called operators of time plus exponential, or what have you, that it, it built up. Um, exponential is actually the function. Um, and one of these types of things is this so called dereferencing. It's, it's this thing. It's saying, get me this parameter called relapse alpha in main. If I go and I look at main and I go up to main here, um, I can find, by the way, control, double click, I, I got here. In main, there's a thing called relapse alpha. It just gets it from main while it's running. It gets the value of that. That's what that thing did in, in person. Um, so here it's kind of going and getting that value from it. And that gives back a value. And it's determined the value of this by calling this function. That gives back a value and then it multiplies them together. Actually, it takes the minus of this guy first and then figures out what this guy is and then multiplies them together and applies x to a, et cetera. Okay, good. Um, 
Um, so we have a bunch of types of functions. We used actually one of these ternary operators, you know, one first one we said, is this agent female? Is it, is it sex female? If so, it's yellow. Okay. These are operators. They, they take values and they return a value. Take values, they perform some computation with them. They say, if this is true, use this one, otherwise that one, or they multiply them or they add them or they reference one, they look up one thing inside of Maine, it looks up relapse hazard or whatever, or they compare them, test if they're equal, and it builds up these these things. And so we we use these a lot in in Java. Um and you know, some of them are like this method call you've seen actually many times. Um, this is called a, a method call. You've, you've actually seen it many times in the con. One of one time this was a um, custom expression, sorry, custom distribution, and we we wanted to get a value calculated by it, so we drew a value from the distribution. Another time this was um, something like uh, uh, this get time sense quit. Right, we it didn't require any didn't require any values to do its job, so we just said, "Hey, give me time sense quit." Remember that? Um, and in general, there's we have these method calls, and, and they're they're called, and they compute a value. Um, they they can compute value. There are other ones that will just do a job for you. They'll you know color this agent green or something like that. But a lot of them are like queries. They give it back a value. And so that's what I'm covering right now. Like this, this guy here returns a double precision value, returns a value. And a lot of them, I'd say most of them will be doing that. But a good fraction will, will do something different, like a command, do it. Um, there's also this thing called indexing, which is if you have an array, um, you can kind of, look up in the other right. You're not going to need that that much these days, but occasionally you'll you'll see it. And and we'll I'll I'll try to flag it if we come to it. So I said that these things are generally calculated bottom up. Kind of so first it exactly what we were looking at. First it calculates this and then it calculates this maybe and then it takes the minus of it. Um, and then it multiplies those two things together, and then it takes the exponent of that and multiplies the result by it. sort of builds it up from a piece. Turn, turns each into a uh, each of these into a value that can be multiplied, and then takes that value, applies the exponent to it, and takes that value and multiplies by it. It's kind of sensible thing, right? Um, it's like you start with your ingredients, cook, and you combine them. You know you crack the egg and stir in milk or whatever and then you get something out and then you and then you take that and you you know you you fry some onions in the pan you pour in the egg and milk and and you get a, a, a something and you stir it around and and you get something else and then you combine that right um so we we commonly string these things together and you'll notice like this one looks really complex the first thing you see it. It's like all these different things with dots. All it's doing is it's calculating this first. And it says, hey, you're a reference to an agent. Uh, maybe it's to me, to myself. Um, if there's word this dot get connected agent three, that gets the third agent or fourth agent that's connected, zero, one, two, three. And, and then I ask for the name of that agent. Then I ask for the length of that name. It's kind of like it's calculated successively. Each one gets a value and it's used to get the next thing and the next. Thing. This dot is kind of, I said it was like an apostrophe. It's like get the connected agent of A, the third connected agent, or fourth, zero, one, two, three, fourth one of A, and then get the name from that. So it's this dot is like ask this one to the left. Whatever it is, um, that value ask it for its name, and then whatever that gave gave it ask for its length. Okay, you don't tend to see these strung out as much these days, but you will sometimes. Um, and it's worth uh, being aware um, that this is all it means. If you see these, it's nothing overwhelming. It's just it's calculating left to right, kind of outwards, uh, inside to out. Okay.
Are you okay with this? Okay. Um, okay, so um, I don't know how, how critical is it that I, I cover this because this is, we, we don't use this that much and as much in code now. I, I, I guess I'll, I guess I'll cover it. I mean, so I'm, I'm talking about variable declarations. This is a variable declaration that's visual. This is typically how we do it these days. In older times, we'd have watering elephants. This was more, for example, and we go to the state chart. Um, oh, God. Yeah. Um, and this is like declaring a double variable, saying, hey, give me something that's a double. And its value is this, my x location. And get me a one that's called y, its value is y, y location. You can do it that way still, but it's better if it's done visually. It's, it's, it's nicer if it's done visually, because people can see what's involved. So this heart disease hazard, this declares a variable. So hey, give me a, a variable. It holds a value. It can be changed over time called heart disease hazard. And it, at any one time, it has a double value, like 0 0.01, 0 0.03, or 3.1415926, or something like that. that. So it holds a double. This color, by contrast, holds a color, uh, a, something of this type. So this thing, this color, or this double is saying, what possible values can it hold? This is saying, this can't hold, you know, quote, my name. Um, uh, it cannot. It it can hold only a double precision value. Um, this can hold a color. That's all it can hold. It can't hold an uh, integer. It can't hold a boolean. You, can, you can't give this like if I said, you know, foobar or something like that. It will now complain bitterly. It'll say like, uh, you can't, you can't turn this into a color. If I said red, it's also gonna. Complain. It's just like, I don't know what that is. It's just, thing. It's just some, it's not going to look inside it for you. It's going to say, I don't know what that thing is. It's just, you gave me a string. Hey, I'm expecting a color. You know, get with the program. Okay. That's what it's going to say. Although it won't always say that. And uh, it doesn't always say it with a proper Canadian accent either. So, um, so, but so if you say black, it will understand it's a color because that's the name of a color. Many color names that that it that are declared by color. Um, okay, so so this is expecting those and those variable declarations say, hey, I'm some value you can assign to me. You can read for me. Um, I hold values of a certain type. I hold a double. I hold the int. I hold a string. A string is like foo or whatever foo Um and you know, we can possibly, often it's good practice, good hygienic practice oops, to give it an initial value. So this gave it black. We don't want to see it ever black. We want it to be assigned wherever it is. It's either here, here, or here. We expect it to be assigned a real color. So we give it a color we shouldn't see. If we ever see that, we know, oh, something's wrong, something's wrong. It should be assigned this. I must have forgotten to assign to it. Maybe I add a state here and add something to it, and I forget to assign to it. So it's kind of good practice to give it a value that you shouldn't see. And if you do, it's a flag like, oh, something. Okay. I mean, not much for you to worry about, but that's kind of how we do things. We're always putting in place things that, to catch ourselves if we forget something. It will flag it and we'll say, oh, yeah. Um, I, I, I declare it, it would remind us. Um, okay. Um, now, uh, a a uh, value here can change over time. Okay? Like, oh, sorry, variable. Yeah. It, it holds a variable at any one point. It kind of has, it's like a box and it has a very, uh, a value inside of it. Right now it starts at 0.01. But later, uh, the heart disease hazard may be set to 0.05. And, you know, it will put that value instead in its box. It will throw out the old value and put the new value. Okay. That's what's going on. And similarly, the color, you know, it right now holds the value black. Oops, black. But then we assign it to lime, and it will now, instead of pointing at black, it'll point at lime. 
um, there doesn't need to be multiple lines, if you want, because it can't be modified, pointing at line. And then when it goes here, it will have said, no, point it at, point it at red. And so now it'll point at that and say, my color is red. That's my color over there. It's, it's red right there. OK. Um, that's the idea. So, so variables hold value. So we have values. We have expressions that are like formulas that calculate values. And then we have variables that can hold values. And guess what else holds a value? A variable does, and there's something else we use a lot that holds a value, and it typically doesn't change. Parameter. A parameter holds a value. It also kind of tells, it communicates that value to the thing being created. But like this initial smoking state holds value. And what sort of value is it? It's, it's one of these types. This told that the universe of possible values, initial, um, initial smoking state and we can actually go see what that is the initial smoking state is one of many possibilities we actually created that um and this is um, mumble it's an option list here initial smoking state we told it what possible value so this type initial smoking state says whatever this is it can only be one of these two and remember we did that the very first day for something called sex SES, then it would say what the possible sex is. And there we only have two, but it could have been non binary, and, and we would have had three. Those, it delineates the universe of possible values this could take on. And that's useful because we as programmers make mistakes. And if we assigned it to one, thinking that that's a sex, we want it to, you know, we're working on some other model where sex is zero and one, and then we we go here to this, start working on this model, we assign it to one thinking that that means female and, and we want it to flag, that's, I don't understand what you mean. That's not a legitimate value. I have no clue what you mean. That's not a real sense. That's why we give those things type, have types. We give them a universe of possible values to catch errors. So we're like, we as People putting these things together all the time, putting in place these mechanisms to stop us from making mistakes or to more quickly discover when we do make mistakes. That's something you should be aware of. It's just like an instinct for someone who's well trained in programming to be putting all these things to catch up. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so I'm on go on with this. Just just be aware that you know when you do C code, you declare a variable instead of putting up here you can put it here and get a value and that goes into it it's held in it like a box and sometimes it's calculating from a big complicated thing by the way this is an array looking up with a column in a row looking up the altitude and it says if it's less than zero guess what it is the altitude is less than zero we can do what from it we can drink from it. water um, it, in fact, it says, this is a comment in Java, drink if thirsty in water. Backslash back, oh, sorry. Forward slash, forward slash, forward slash, forward slash means a comment. There's another type of comment, which I'll get to, but I'll just, since I told you one type, I'll tell you the other type. And it is, can be, so a, a slash slash can only be one line. It goes for the line and that's it. At the end of the line, the next line is no longer your comment. You don't have to put anything to end it. The other type of comment begins slash star, and then it ends with slash star. This is an older type of comment from C, inherited by C++ and then by Java. Um, and this can go as many lines as you want. This could be many lines. You could have a big block there that says, that lays out a discourse on, you know, how am I approaching the problem or something, and that's fine. Um, those are two things. We put in comments to tell us, to, to, to help remind us what we're doing and remind other people who see this code what's, what's going on. And one of the suggestions is, you know, in software development, good software developers, Try to write code such that they don't, that if comments are not there, it'll still be totally self-documented. 
That's what good primary weapons are trying to do. Um, and if if you're not doing that, at least provide lots of comments. And that's really what this is doing, this code. It's not written in a way that's self-documented, but it does have comments to make up a little bit of stuff. And if you go around the corner to the lounge there, you'll see some posters aimed at programmers. And one of them says, comment your code, remember your coworker. So um, you'll, you'll know where that comes from. Okay, um, just, just be aware that if you put variables on the left-hand side, like the ethnicity of a person or, or the color of myself or my age, um, and you assign them, this, this is an assignment, single equal, it will put this value into that box. It, you know, they hold, my color holds a reference in, my, in this box. There's a reference to a certain color. And here I'm gonna, I'm gonna assign it to red. I actually say color.red, although if, if I handle it properly, most of the time in any logic, it'll just take red. Okay. It'll, it'll basically it'll say, hey, consider all colors, uh, just so I can just use them without putting color dot. Um, okay, um, so just be aware, like we can actually have an expression over here that gives, it, it, it's, it's referring to a variable or, okay, this is the, this is the truth. I told you parameters should only be, should not be modified. They should not be modified. They should not be modified. It is not a good idea to modify. I'm not saying they cannot be. And sometimes people modify. Um, and it's not a good idea because people expect them to be a fixed attribute. And then if you're modifying them, it's like the world quakes in bad ways. It's like you expect the building to be stable and it's swaying around. You become disoriented, bad things can happen and you can be hurt and, and you know, bad things can happen. Um, one of my colleagues says, never run a model in front of him. <laughs> bad things can happen. Um, so, so you don't want that. You want, you want parameters that are stable, that are solid, that don't change. Once you give them, you, they, they hold that value. But just be aware you can modify them. And like this thing looks to me like, Okay, okay. Um, there are occasional times where people will do that. It's just try to avoid it. Try to avoid it. Don't do it loose. Don't do it casual. So, so there's many Java variables around. And I, I won't go into this. Basically, here are some variables. These live inside a person. Every person will have these variables in it. It will also have this parameter in it. So if we had a reference to this person, P, pointing to a particular person, we could say P dot color, and it will give us this color for that person. We could say P dot heart disease hazard, it will tell us what it is. We could ask P initial smoking state, it will tell us what that is. We could even do something like that would tell us what state are we in. Okay. It, would, it would get tell us what state we're in. Um, okay, I'm not gonna go into this. Okay, so I hope you don't see this, but if you do, I, I wanna inure you against it. And I don't think you have to look much further than the wandering elephants to see some wild, to live on the wild side. Um, so there you go, there you go. I, I, see, I see at least one of these there, and um, that one isn't, is isn't horrible. Um, uh, maybe there's more. Oh, yeah, two. I see two. Um, right here is a plus plus. Don't be afraid of that. All that means is make this one. It, it's like update this to be one bigger than its value. Uh, so maybe it holds, it's, it's a variable. It holds a little box that has a number in it. Maybe it's three. And if you if A holds a box that is three in it, and you say A plus plus, it'll now it'll be the same box. It will just have four in it. And then you do it again, five in it. 
it's 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 easier than saying a equals a plus one. And if you see a equals a plus one, one of the things that's a bit distracting about it, I mean, you may wonder like why do programmers do this? There's actually a long story for that particular one, why it's indicated that way. But if you if you were to write this, believe it or not, when when someone looks at this, you know, they're gonna need to visually look, is this the same as this? And they have to think a little bit. Is it the same to figure out, oh, it's just updating itself, it's just incrementing itself. We call this it's incrementing itself. And normally incrementing, most commonly incrementing increase itself by one. That's what we mean. We say increments. It's like tallying it up. One more, one more, one more. Okay. So rather than forcing someone to undergo that, we commonly write it as A plus one. Now there's there's a subtlety to it. And I'm not going to talk about it, but you can also write plus plus A. Okay. And these are actually not quite the same if you use them as an expression. This one one of them increments it before using the value, want to use it after. So if this is part of a bigger expression, you're doing bad. Like, don't, don't do it. Don't, don't do it. Don't be taught that way. Don't, don't do it. If this is part of a bigger expression, if this were like C times A plus plus, like you're doing bad things. Like this is evil. This is evil. Okay. Do not go there. This is like, this is like the uh the, the heart of darkness, because look at it, this is calculated value and doing updating this variable. Programmers sometimes like, there's an earlier generation predicted, but you still see it, programmers like to strut. They like to do really clever, obscure things and smirk while someone can't understand. Them. That's, that's evil, okay? It's evil, it's bad, do not go there, do not do, not do this, okay? But it turns out this is different than this uh, plus plus a. Um, this way, it will actually increment it before calculating the value and then use the value. This one will will calculate a c times a and then only after that increment a. So it won't it won't change. It'll still be c times a basically, but um, the value. But it has changed this as a side effect. These are bad things. Do not do them, but that's the difference between them. Okay. So just be aware if you see it, if it's not in an expression, you're fine. If it's by itself on a line, you're fine. You're happy. Um, like like it is here. Um, not not a problem. It's just saying make it one bigger. But if you put it in an expression, you're dealing with someone who's playing fast and loose and is trying to be clever or doesn't care about writing clear code. And that's a bad sign. Okay. But a plus plus is one way to write this. It lowers mental attention, the need for mental attention. The other way is to write A plus equals one. They, they mean the same thing. Here, though, you could write anything. You could write A plus equals two, or you could write A plus equals C or something like that. Um, it's just saying increase it by C, increase it by two, increase it by one. Um, that's all it's saying. It's the same thing like A equals A plus one. This would be A equals A plus two, A equals A plus two, okay? So why am I telling you this? Because you see this in sort of programmer stuff. I mean, go look at this count plus plus. Yeah, come on, get off your high horse, I would say, but uh, it's not that bad. It's it's not horrible, but Actually, it's it's not that bad. I don't blame this program too much. It's a nice way of saying increment, but it requires you to know what it means. Um, and this one is minus equals a thousand, meaning it's this thing equals this thing minus ten thousand. And you can argue reasonably, is it really better to put on the right hand side minus that? Because it's kind of a big thing, and you kind of kind of look at it and say, oh, it's exactly the same expression. So I, I forgive this program is it isn't that bad, right? but but you got to know about it ahead of time and do not do this. This is evil. Bad things happen and, and bugs are formed and bad habits are formed and people are upset and yeah, um, software is shipped with bugs and they don't. Okay. 
Okay, just, just saying no. Okay. Um, okay. Um, yeah, there's this. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Generalizing. Okay. Um, okay. So so we talked about a little bit about references. Like this is saying my mother is M. So M becomes like I say, I'm a box in the book. This is my mother. Pointing at something that could be my mother. Maybe it's empty right now. It's what we call null. And I sign it to be M, which is a reference to my mother. So now it points to what whatever M points to. This points to um, um, and I could I could assign my mother to be, you know, the, the third person in the population, person zero one, you know, right there. Um, uh, okay, so so you know, here I assigned it to be M, and then maybe I assign it to be this other thing, but it doesn't change. M is just also a reference to a particular person. This makes my mother I'm pointing to that person, same person that M is pointing to. And now it says, no, your mother is that one. Okay, oh, okay, now I'm pointing to that one. It hasn't modified M. M is just pointing to the original person. Okay, I'm not gonna go into this. Um, um, I think we may save that to our next lecture, but I, if it's okay, I, I do wanna talk a tiny bit about Java statements. Can I talk about those? Those are the other big people. We see them a lot, um, or a fair bit. Where have we seen Java statements? We've seen them actually many places. The truth is, oops, um, we've seen them many places. These are Java statements. You can see them, you can recognize them by their symmetry. Um, there's Java statements um, here. They delete someone from the population. Um, these, so what is this statement? A statement is like a command. It says, do this. It actually is, is changing something, typically. Um, so Java statements um, are um, uh, contain um, contain sort of logic, which, which affects some change. They cause some change to happen. They're like a command. They're like a Imperative, do this. Update the value of a variable. That's what's going on here, right? We assign to color. Color is a variable. It holds a value, and we're giving it a new value of silver. Now, actually, this is silver. It's a reference to a object, silver. One object, silver. Hi-ho, silver. No, um, <laughs> um, hi-ho, silver. Uh, but... It, the, there's there's a silver and we're saying you say color point to silver, and it says yes ma'am. Um, here we're we're giving it this value, um, we're putting it in the box here. This time we're pointing a reference to silver in this the box of this thing. That's what we're doing. But it's the point is it's an imperative. It says do this, do it, assign it, boom, and it just performs that action. This is not returning a value. This is not calculating a value. Not saying like 3.2. No, no, no. It's just saying like do this. Imperative. It's like the drill sergeant. You know, soldier, run into that cloud or something like that. Um, okay. Um uh, so like this, this is not a statement. It shouldn't be a semicolon there because it's calculating a value. It's a large, large thing calculating value, but it's it's calculating value. This is this is um a, a possible value. But this is a statement. It's saying set the cessation time. Where is cessation time? Right there, that variable, to be the value of time. So remember, this is setting the value that's in the box of cessation. Cessation time has some value in it at any one point, and this is putting in a value that's the value that's returned by calling time. 2.2, .2, something like that, puts it in cessation. That okay, okay. Um, uh, so these are commands, and they can do many things. They could change, could assign to it, it can return a value. Let me show you one of those. This may blow your mind, but here's a function, and this is actually returning a value. It's saying, Hey, I'm in this function, I was called 
doing a job and now it's time to leave and I'm going to give what I need to give to get out of here, which is a double. This says it returns a double, meaning it's returning a value like 3.4, 2.8 or 5.9 or whatever. And this is the value I'm returning. The job of this function is to return a value. And this is the value being returned. That's why I say it can return a value. It can also call something, say like, like call something to do something. So this is a classic example. This is saying, call this thing which removes me from the population. Basically it's saying, take me home from the ball game. Like, uh, you know, um, have me vamoosh, have me disappear into some, something like that. Have me removed from the population. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. Um, so that's calling a, a function or a method, uh, as it, it's called. Um, uh, a method is like a function that's called on a particular thing, like on the thing. Hey, hey, get me out of here. Remove me from your population. And by exemption, get rid of it. Okay. Um, and it can also, you know, perform a, a, a set of statements. So, like in Wandering Elephants, this, this, this is a statement inside of it. So it's testing, is this true? And if so, it says, go, go drink the water. Um, if this is true, um, demolish trees, go. Go rampage the tree, the elephant. You know, denuding the vegetation. Um, this is a long statement. By the way, you notice we, we, we use these little curly brackets to indicate there's a bunch of statements in it, and we indent. Oh, please, please learn to indent. Please, you're gonna write code. Learn to indent. Indent is like everything, but it's not enforced by Java. It it won't complain, but indent to show the logical nesting, to show this is inside this. If you look at, the, if this were not indented, bad things will happen because people won't see that it's only executed if this condition is true. And it's because it's indented, people say, oh, it's only if this thing is true that this is true. Otherwise, you just think it's automatically, I don't know how many bugs come about because people don't indent. who haven't been taught undergrad computer programming or computer science, they don't indent actually. It, like, it agitates me greatly in a, in a, because I, I could just see the dangers. It's like walking across a busy street with your eyes closed. It's like, don't do that, please, please. It's just begging for a bug, begging for a bug. Um, no, okay. Um, so this is, these are examples of statements that have statements inside of them. If this is true, do all these things. And this one does this until, as long as this condition is true. And, and there's also an until one. It will do it until a certain Okay, so, so you can have statements inside another statement, right? And you can have this condition if. Um, uh, so we give it statements all the time, and any logic statements are all around. I try to keep them bite-sized. I try not to do much there, but these are a bunch of statements. They're in the action code. When you come in here, do this code. Mm -hmm. Entry action, exit action. You can also do them for this. There's an action. It, it executes these statements. It says, do these. By the way, here's another call to a function as the statement. And this is referring to the fact that not all functions, jobs in life, are to calculate things. This is a function which calculates things right here. But some functions actually serve to do other things. Like they, they say, do this, buddy. Like send to all connected a message saying, I'm, I'm quitting. Send to all my connections. That's actually telling it to do things. Functions generally come in two types. One type. This is not strictly true, but it's good practice. It's good, safe software engineering. You have two types of functions. In some languages, they're called separate subroutines or functions. But, but for Java, um, C++, 
functions are by convention, they should do one of two things only. Either they calculate a value and they don't change it. All they do is calculate a value. Their job in life is to calculate a value. We call those, as software developers, we call those queries. They, they just calculate a value. Um, we have many such functions, right? Like, like this function time since quit, its job in life is to calculate a value. It doesn't change anything. No, 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 no. It, you call it once, you call it many times, you get the same value back and it, it doesn't change anything. That's clean. It just, it packages up a complex calculation so you don't have to look at it every time. It, you just say, give me the time since quit. And you don't have to worry about how it calculates. That's all in this. And it doesn't change anything. It's just a safe, nice way to do it. That's one type of function. Clean, query, just calculate. The other type of function is function doesn't calculate anything. It doesn't return anything. All it does is do something. This is called a command. It, its job in life is to, to change something. And you call it, and you say, send that message. Or you say, delete this agent. Or you say, turn this agent red. And it doesn't return anything. By the way, this is, like, if my students listen to this, like, this is not um, something that every computer science student will know. I mean, um, this is actually like really clean coding recommendations. I teach it in my third year or fourth year software engineering class. But you, you can't count on every programmer knowing this. This is like, this is best practices type of stuff. And, you know, um, careful programmers do this. Um, and many programmers aspire to be careful because they burnt themselves too many times. They stayed up had to study up all night because of a silly bug they didn't encounter. Or, you know, they had a function which calculates a value, but you didn't know, but it also changes something. And you call it again, you get a different value or you, you know, you don't realize you're changing something and, and they, you know, driven crazy and, and bad things happen. Um, okay, so, so I'm telling you, functions come in two types. This is a function whose job in life is to just calculate a value just returns this value. And its job in life is to have me not worry about what the formula is. I just call it and it gives me back value. Whereas this function is its job in life is to remove me from the population. It doesn't return a value. That's why it's a statement. It's a command. Do this. I'm not using the value. I'm not saying if this is true, whatever. No, 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 no. And and same thing like for um this is this is a function that calculates value. Returns, returns that value. Um, I could call it many times uh, right now in a sequence, one but you know, right at this immediate time, and it will give the same value. And this is one that whose job in life is to perform an action. It's a command, not a return of value. So in general, any logic adheres to this clean coding. Pretty good. Okay. Um, so these are Java statements, and there's a bunch. Types, you know, if, for, while, do while. Um, and there are some associated with something called the exceptions, which is basically if things go wrong, how do you say? You don't really, these days, you don't really have to worry about this much. Back when I started teaching these boot camps, it was more common because any logic had less built in. And so you'd end up building a little bit more of your own and you use exceptions. Occasionally you see them. Like this, we actually saw one with wandering elephants. I don't know if you remember, there's a thing I saying like, can't find way out. That threw an exception. Meaning it has a special way of signaling something bad has happened. This is a description of it. I can't do my normal job. Basically, go figure what you want to do with me. Like, I can't do my job anymore. I'm out of here, is, is kind of what that is. Um, it's like escalating it to the top level of your organization. Um, um, and, and so common Java statements um, uh, you know, can call functions. They, they can be expressions. They, they can, in other words, like, like calling a function is one of them. It can be an assignment, um, which is actually an expression as well. It can be a for, a while. 
Um, if you're like, if you, if you start to do more coding, you like like bigger model models, you will certainly want to know about the of statements that are, are there. By the way, these aren't that different from an R. They are your if statements. You also have if expressions, kind of like that question mark colon thing that is asked. But you have for statements. You have while statements. You can do these. Um, okay. Um, so for statements loop over things. These are unfortunately, if you have a decent sized model, you're going to have some. That's very case. You're going to loop over the population and find the person. You know that. Uh, find all people that have been infected more than once uh, or something like that. Um, uh, or you're going to go through all the homes in the population, and, you know, total up the number of people. And eh, you could do that with an, a, a, a statistic. But there, there are many times where we might loop through, you know, and, and do something. Maybe we go from one to three and we send messages to infect three different people. Or something. Um, um, now, you should be aware that there are some really elegant ways to, like, where less skilled programmers do, do this. I'm, I'm not saying everyone who does this is less skilled. It's just, like, these days, some really beautiful things you can do without looping. You can do them, um, and it's actually quite clear um, in, a, in a way that doesn't require you to loop like this. But... Loops are still very common, and and they're they're often often the obvious thing to do to, to handle things. Um, if you go through everyone in the population, you send them a thing saying you're intervening the first five hundred people, you say you're intervening five hundred random people, you say you're intervening something like that. Um, okay. Um, if I think you probably have a sense of this from R or something, you know, if this, otherwise that. Um, um, these are statements. So unlike many programming languages, and I think in R as an example, um, where if statements are expressions, they calculate a value. Here they don't. They did do something. So if this is true, do this. Otherwise, do that. Um, it's a it's a statement. Okay, and often you leave out these. Right? You don't have to. You could just um, oh, there's a. Get this indent going. Come on. Yeah, let's go. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, hey. Um, good. Okay. Um, right. Um, yeah, you also often put these. Sometimes we have models which do this. Uh, it's getting pretty big. I'd like to try to avoid it if I can, but yeah, you do, you do see this sometimes. First, are they less than two? If not, are they less than five? If not, are they less than ten? And you handle some, you know, get them back to or whatever. Um, uh, yeah, and it's kind of like the same as nesting. If this, otherwise, if they're this, otherwise, if they're this like indented. It's it's really the same. You could you could view it either either way. Um, so here you have. You know, if statements that only have a constant. If this is the case, drink. If you're at a water body, drink. Uh, if you're at a, if you have vegetation around you more than a certain amount, do you, you know, destroy ten thousand units. Um. By the way, this is like I would, if a student wrote this for me, I would say, hey, go clean this up. Put it into functions. I shouldn't have to look at all these details. Put it into functions that I could call, and it would be about five lines long. Or something. And you just call these functions. Their name is clear, and it's all beautiful. It, it's much less error prone. And when they need to see the details, they can go to that. Um, OK, so um, right. Um, I think you know, that's, um, I don't think I'll, I'll go into it. You see while loops. Uh, we saw it here. Do this while, right? Um, there's a thing called a switch, which is around this. It's kind of like an if, but it's like a multi-way if. You know, it'll handle different cases all at once. Handles a bunch of different cases. So you can have this. 
So we have code that will import social network analysis data from like PyX or from um, as a connectivity matrix. So I, I wrote that code in 2015 or something like that. And, and you know, there's several network file types. If it's a PyX file, do this. If it's a connectivity matrix, do this. If I don't know what it is, say, I don't know what you're doing. It's, it's not a file I, I understand. Um, yeah. Um, so these blocks, you can put these kind of open, these are curly brackets, put them in a statement, like an if statement, put curly brackets there. Kind of looks like a, let. it's a left curly, it's called, and a right curly, and then a bunch of statements. So where one statement can go normally, you can put curlies in and go ahead, all sequence. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Variables are associated with types. We talked about that. They contain like a box for value, right? Um, and we, when we declare its value, we we say, what's its name and what's its type? It's the Boolean. Um, it's good practice to give it an integer value. If you don't, you're kind of throwing caution in the It's another way. Places could be very important. Um, okay. Um, uh, okay. Um, uh, yeah, these are all examples of expressions, assigning things. Assigning is an expression. So if you say it's bad practice, but if you say A, sorry, A equals one, you can actually add this to two or it's horrible because you don't want you want you want something that's not simultaneously an expression and changing. It's the same idea with a function. You either want it to change something and you don't look at the value as a result. There's no value as a result, or you want it to just just calculate it with expression without a change. Doing this is bad. But this is an expression, so it has the value one. It's and just like this thing has a value. It's 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 bad. Don't 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 do it. But technically, so these are technically expressions. Um, um, yeah, I, I won't go into exceptions. But basically, exceptions provide this way of saying I don't know what to do, and you can catch them. You can like intercept them. Say, oh, you didn't know what to do. I can help you with that. I'll, I'll relay this message up in a nice way to the model. Or you could say, I will close those files and send a message to someone through email saying bad thing happened and I couldn't run the simulation or whatever. So you can, when when bad things happen, you have a special way of indicating it, and then you have a special way of handling, it. and. You know, good programmers. Um, you know, under under that, you won't really need that. But just just be aware that, like, if it's imagine you have a model and it's parsing a a special database or or it's parsing a a spreadsheet, and you have a spreadsheet that encodes parameters. This is very common. Idiom Wade does this all the time. Kurt does this all the time. Um, so instead of encoding parameters just in in um, scenarios, you you have the option of running a scenario which reads in the parameters from a file, reads in from a database. Now imagine it discovers the file is corrupted, like it can't, it doesn't recognize the form, it, it, or the file is missing, or the file, you know, still doesn't seem to have numbers in it um, where it expects them. Then you want a way of kind of saying, hey, I don't know what to do, help me. Um, you know, something bad has happened. This is what's bad. You give a little description of it, just like this thing, the wandering element said, like, can't get out of here. You give a little description, and then hopefully somewhere further up, it will do something more intelligent and warn the programmer or, or log an error and 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 have have something that cleans up, and so you don't leave that file open. So this is what we do. We try to make our programs or our models kind of robust. If things go wrong, they they gracefully fail. They don't cause problems. They don't like write output to overwrite things that destroys what was there before. They say, oh, something's wrong. I'm not gonna touch anything. I'm just gonna back out of here and let the pro and let the model learn. 
Okay, so those were statements and expressions. I, I um, And we got a little bit of functions in there. Tomorrow, my inclination, if, if I can give this, would be functions and talk a little bit, um, uh, maybe maybe a little bit about um, some some additional uh, pieces that that might come in, um, like uh, when you're referring to objects, um, objects refer to things, and, and just talk a little bit about that, and talk about the relationship between these things, which are called classes. Person is a class, and we create instances of it that are called objects. So each person is an object. Um, we have a reference to that object. We have a reference to my mother. We have a reference to my brother. And those are instances of a class, it's called, which is person. person it's a theory of personhood. And it's like a cookie cutter. And just like a cookie cutter, you can use to make several different cookies, any different cookies with that shape. You can create many people with the theory of personhood, and they differ in just, you know, some of them have sparkles on top of them, some of them have painted with chocolate or what, whatever, like the cookies that are made with the cookie cutter, but they differ in, they're made with different dough. Types. That's, what, that's what these things are. And when we have a population of them, we have population of, population, population of these, these uh, instances of, of, of that person class, um, the things made from the cookie cutter culture. Is that helpful? Okay, so, so um, you know, I'll, I'll get some feedback and if, if you'd like, I'd be glad to do another, another session on, on that tomorrow. Um, oh, I, I, I did get a question here. Uh, I have um, once inserted a sizable code into any logic with annotation, but any logic, uh, uh, so um, when I removed indentation, it was built uh, and did what was expected. Um, uh, I'm wondering if there was a special character in there that might have been invisible. Um, so um, it's possible there was a non-printing character that it didn't understand. If you want, I would love to to see that instance, we we could figure it out. I would, I I would suspect the most likely thing is that it had something in it which was invisible to the eye because it was. It turns out that there's many characters that show up as if they were a space, or or you know white space, but are actually something different. And I'm wondering if Sungju, if that might have been uh, in it. Uh, I'm again glad to to look look at it. Yeah, absolutely, we'd be glad to. To help with that. That sounds interesting and it, it will probably be a fun thing to sort of figure out. Okay. Awesome. So I recorded this and uh yeah, you bet. Um I will post this. Any any questions so I can answer further? Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are built in in any logic. Yeah. So, uh, great question. Um, um, so, any logic has, um, well, okay. So, I should say that most of those we use are built into any logic. There are also Java and Java libraries of a whole bunch of tools. Okay. And I mean, one of any logic's advantages is you have access to this massive universe of, of Java. Java libraries, and, and that is huge functionality, including exposed to any logic for it. Um, but beyond that, any logic has these really rich, um, they're called APIs, application programming interfaces, but that's a fancy term for sort of a, a library of, 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 of code that you can use um, to do various things. See this API reference, right? And, um, you can see there's there's some GIS libraries, right? Um, so you can get you know GIS point descriptors and and um, you can get route providers to route you on certain roads and region descriptors. 
descriptors and and you know things that show sort of a, a map and 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 here's parsing I think for for things like shape files and all those sort of things and all of these have these so-called methods okay a method is like a function that's called on an object it's like there's an object maybe a person and it knows how to do some things hey person your person you can tell me your id or you can tell me your name you can tell me your location or whatever They're like and in general any logic has has tons of these things but you typically use just a small repertoire of these um but like any agent um can um can undertake um, certain actions. Like it knows how to, it knows how to do certain things. Okay, um, and and there's just tons of these options. So this like um, send to uh, nearest or send to um, random connected um, uh, connected here. Um, you could see an agent here, so this class agent, and it knows how to send to neighbors. And you notice it's documented here, and it, and, and it says send to random connected, um, sends a message to randomly chosen connected agent, be delivered by your event. Um, um, you know, if you're okay with the message being delivered immediately, use delivered method to that effect. Send to all connected, send to random, send to all. These are all kind of standard things, and there's going to be some for, you know, for sending things. There's going to be ones for like getting my x location and my y location, get my position, like my position in like in a GIS environment, like latitude, longitude, get rotation, um, get the nearest agent by the route um, from a set of agents, like get me. Get me the nearest agent that I can get to on roads, you know, like nearest by the various roads connected to me. Move to the nearest agent, um, agents in range, um, uh, set X, Y, set my latitude, longitude, distances, all these sort of things. Jump to, I think we, we talked about that and then we used it. I could ask, am I moving? That's a query, right? Um, set velocity is a command set my velocity, right? Um, I could ask time to arrival of, at some, um, to arrival at a, at a destination, um, all these sort of things. It's just probably over a hundred of, of these sort of things for, for it alone. And um, you can search and look at the documentation on it. Um, it's actually quite, quite handy. So, um, you know, if I were to search overall for distance or something like that, you'd find all these different sort of things that that uh, that I can use, um, you know, for 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 distance. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if that's helpful, but this documents all those built in. Other questions? Questions? And then you think about it overnight and that's tomorrow. So, sure. I know some other people seem to be interested in watching this overnight or watching this after I post it. So, do that. Cool. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sungju. And um, we will see you folks tomorrow. Thank you. And be sure to take anything you'd like from out there. Don't pause on something. No. It's, I, I tell you, it's, um, it's a funny thing. Um, I, um, um, so I, this is the first time three years, just cannot believe three years of operations, right? I was seconded to the health system for a year, year and a half. And then last summer, with everything that was going on pandemic wise, but, um, I, we did run, some other boot camps earlier this year that were not in person. 
they were um, they were uh, virtual. All my events have been virtual, but thus far that I, I all the sort of big um, events where I'm the sole person who can, um, and and even some where I've chaired. Um, uh, but um, you know all the big multi day ones. So, um, but it's funny because in like in those virtual events, I actually found it like when I when I taught them, I thought, oh, this isn't that bad. Um, I felt really sedentary because I was sitting at my desk all day. But it, it, it like physically, it wasn't that demanding, and so I was able to get through it. I wasn't like totally dead exhausted at the end of the day, and my throat didn't feel burnt out. Um, first time, I, talked, I literally I lost my throat. Like at the end of the day, I could not talk. All I could do was just, and um, uh, so, um, so I thought, okay, it's gonna be brutal, like coming back to an in-person event, but I'm gonna do it. Um, I, I really want to, you know, to try the in-person and hybrid and so. Um, and I said, you know, I've aged three years. We'll see, see if, you know, how it goes. Um, and I tell you, um, so it is really tired. There's no question, particularly like yesterday and today, I, I didn't get nearly as much sleep as I'd like. And so I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm tired, but it's not actually like total exhaustion. I actually find I get a lot of energy out of the audience. I get a lot of energy out of the participants. There's something really enlivening about being together and, and doing things. And it, it's really interesting because it's enlivening me and adding energy in a way that the distance events just seem kind of flat. Yeah. 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 I could, could not agree more. And actually, one of the things, you know, I had to make the the uh, challenging decision of, of like which things can be remote. Like, do we have incubator remote? Do we have hackathon remote? And I, I just decided, you know, when it comes to projects, it's just so much more um, real and more um, and energizing, but also just more um, educational. I think if you can sit next to me and you can talk back and forth and use whiteboards. It just doesn't cut it the breakout rooms and Zoom and so on. As much as they're better than nothing, it, it, it just can't compare. And so I'm glad I made that decision because it, it makes it much, much easier. Um, that, 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 that's correct. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. Um, and so I'm glad I, I thought it was, a, it, was the, it was the right move to have incubator require in-person attention. Um, and it allows for things like this that are a little bit more informal and it allows me to pop between groups more easily and, and look over people's shoulders and just all these these things and you know going and 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 you and going to lunch together and all that sort of stuff. It's really great. So yeah I'm I'm glad and, and I think it'll be a model for, for future sessions. We'll learn from it. We'll try to figure out ways to do it better. But I think it's it's a lot better than doing it online. And it's not as exhausting as I, as I It's not as dead tiring because there's this energizing component. To it. Okay. Well, thanks. I, yeah, yesterday I really needed it. Sure. I'm going to stop recording.